Hi there. In the last video, we had uh, uh, gone through the different uh, works by Taib Sali. We had actually mentioned the works and we had uh, kind of given a background uh, reading on uh, Sali in general. Uh, so in this particular presentation, we'll be moving on uh, to seasons of migration to the north at one particular novella, which we'll be concentrating upon. And uh, it's, 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 a, it's a short piece and uh, it's basically a first person narration by uh, uh, an unnamed narrator. And uh, the, the piece can be considered as a very good example uh, for post-colonial fiction wherein uh, the protagonist is a kind of representative of that uh, section of the once upon a time colonized nation uh, trying to come into terms with the binaries of tradition and modernity and uh, in the end you find the narrator awaiting himself in the river Nile uh, and crying out help help uh, uh, in, in one way or the other pointing out uh, the fate of the colonized uh, uh, in, in a post-colonial era. So without uh, any further introduction, uh, uh, we'll just move into a very short analysis of the uh, major uh, 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 ideas or the key points uh, of this particular novella. Now, this is just a reading, uh, a general reading. This is, these are actually certain ideas which I got after a general reading of the um, uh, novel. So, um, uh, I won't say that this is a very concise or uh, uh, a total uh, a summary or an analysis of the uh, uh, season of migration to the north. But these are certain things which came into my mind when I went through uh, the plot. Now, one of the elements which has been dealt by Taib Sali is the anxiety of the natives. At the very onset of the uh, uh, story, you would find uh, 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 the narrator coming back to his homeland after seven years uh, of pursuing his uh, higher studies uh, in, the, in the UK. And, and, and uh, um, as soon as he steps uh, back home, people uh, at, back in his homeland assault him with questions regarding uh, the customs, culture and tradition uh, of Europeans. And they are quite surprised when he tells them that the Europeans were like them with very minor differences. Uh, that they uh, raise their children well, that uh, they also are people who risk their culture, etc. So that is something which uh, the natives are, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, taken uh, with surprise. Now, uh, the anxiety of, of, of the cultural anxiety of uh, the native is expressed by Bint Majzoub, one of the characters in the novella. Uh, uh, she says, we were afraid that you would bring back with you an uncircumcised infidel for a wife. Now, uh, this particular anxiety with regard to all who go abroad for studies is clearly reflected uh, in, in uh, studies from a very much traditional patriarchal kind of a society, something which is uh, reflected in her uh, statement. And again, uh, you can also um, uh, find the anxiety of the uh, people with regard to an alien presence among them. Them, and that is uh, in, the, in the character of Mustafa Said. Mustafa Said is not a local uh, villager. He is actually someone who had come from Khartoum, and uh, and and he was a very silent person. Uh, he 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 was deeply respected by the uh, villagers, but at the same time, he always maintained a critical distance with them. And and this particular anxiety of a stranger is reflected in in many of the statements and many of the uh, comments which are passed uh, by people and the narrator himself starts getting so much inquisitive about uh, this man uh, who possesses a dignity or a style which is quite different from um, the uh, loud, noisy uh, kind of style which is followed by his own people. Now another element which we can note in this particular novella is the element of nostalgia. Now the British educated narrator, he, is, he reminiscences his past. He used to do it even when he was abroad. And then uh, after coming home, he feels like a palm tree, a being with background, with roots, with a purpose. Now he is actually, he, he is actually kind of uh, uh, so much excited that he's back home and that he can, uh, uh, he can feel that he has 
got his roots intact and that is actually a feeling which he had maybe he did not have when he was abroad for seven years you know he was pursuing his studies on some unknown poet uh, uh, on one of those unknown poets that's I mean it's, it's, it's a statement which is closer to that which has been used in the novella so again uh, you can find this uh, nostalgia creeping in in a very peculiar manner uh, in the uh, diaries uh, of Mustafa and also the infrastructure uh, which he inhibited when he was abroad and also when uh, he was uh, in, in the village when he was abroad he he used to uh, you know uh, bring women to his room uh, uh, which was uh, uh, scented with um, smells of arabia with eastern smells perfumes and uh, uh, incense i mean uh, whatever that uh, you can smell or whatever that you consider to be exotic uh, was there in his room but uh, as uh, the narrator opens the locked room of mustafa uh, 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 because the key was actually something which Mustafa had given to the narrator uh, the narrator was considered as a very close friend of Mustafa uh, before Mustafa uh, disappears or dies uh, that is something which is left vague over there uh, anyway it's believed that he died uh, uh, you know in, in the waters of the Nile uh, well um, anyway uh, the key uh, is the key to his room is actually left with the narrator and it's only the narrator who had had the opportunity to enter the room and when he enters the room he finds a fireplace just like in the european model he finds photos of uh, women uh, mustafa uh, had uh, you know had relationships with he finds quite a different european setup when he enters uh, the room so this particular nostalgia for the homeland when he was abroad and the nostalgia for the europe when he comes back home so this uh, this uh, binary is something which uh, is well reflected in the uh, in, in as the narrator uh, uh, you know reads the diaries of mustafa and also the uh, infrastructure of uh, the rooms which he inhibited now uh, another uh, uh, feature or another point to be noted is the way in which language has been uh, used in, in in novel especially uh, english language english language kind of serves as a bridge to the past of mustafa said now mustafa said who is considered as a man who came from another uh, uh, place another city uh, uh, but uh, there was more to the man and that that there was more to him it was discovered by the narrator when mustafa in a drunken uh, state you know after losing off he uh, recites uh, a poem in very perfect english and that, and and his fluency in english is actually something which later when he reveals his past to the narrator we come to recognize that that is something which even surprised europeans because he could he had actually mastered the foreign tongue so well uh, that it, it was a surprise even to uh, the Uh, you know europeans to whom he or with whom he uh, had had conversations so language especially the colonizers tongue here acts as a kind of a roadway to the past of mustafa uh, to a past which he does not really want to talk about to a violent past uh, uh, which he really doesn't want to talk about now another interesting uh, uh, fact which we find in this novella is the way in which uh, there are references uh, where uh, as as usual you know a nation is compared to uh, a woman uh, because and, and that, this is largely done by mustafa and uh, he says these are three statements which are taken at random from the novella he he talks about cairo uh, and uh, that is his first you know uh, uh, outside uh, his own homeland experience when he was uh, around 13 or 14 years old cairo was a city of laughter just as mrs robinson was a woman of laughter now she was the first european woman he he, he comes into contact with she was more like a mother figure for him but uh, even then uh, the novelist uh, says that maybe uh, she also uh, kind of ignited that sexual uh, passion uh, in, uh, in in mustafa so uh, uh, and again uh, mustafa says i felt as though cairo that large mountain to which my camel had carried me was a european woman like mrs robinson its arms embracing me again in another part he says in my mind her eyes were the color of cairo gray green so he kind of associates 
or through Mustafa the novelist tries to associate that particular notion or idea of nation being pictured as a woman and here uh, uh, the colonized is picturing uh, uh, you know uh, European women later when when when, when, when we read uh, the novel later you would find how he considers uh, his sexual uh, uh, you know uh, passion or his amorous adventures as a kind of uh, uh, a necessity to uh, conquer over a woman uh, conquer over a culture conquer a, uh, a particular uh, uh, person uh, as if he's conquering a nation so that is something which is again reflected in, in uh, Taib Salih's uh, novella now there is an interesting uh, uh, thing which is to be noted in the novel because the narrator kind of acts as a foil to Mustafa. Uh, Mustafa Said represents that particular section of uh, the humble rural Sudanese uh, uh, who gets educated abroad and who uh, who also works abroad and then later uh, abuses the colonial system and in turn is abused by the system. So he's he's actually somebody who gets disillusioned so fast even before he returns back home. Now the narrator is also educated abroad, and then what happens with the with the narrator is he's kind of a representative of the new Sudanic uh, youngsters or the or the new student uh, because he becomes part of that particular system as an official in the Department of Education, and then later he cannot answer the very many questions which the natives ask him because they ask him see. You have been holding conferences about uh, giving us education, basic education to our children, but that doesn't happen here. Conferences are going on in ACU rooms, uh, seminars are happening in ACU rooms. Uh, you say that such and such people from such and such countries had visited you, you, you did an international uh, seminar on it, but that doesn't really reflect in, in, in our rural spaces. We don't have schools, we don't have uh, facilities which you promised us. So, so um, the narrator finds it quite difficult to answer such questions which are asked to him by his own people. And, and at the end of the novel, as I said in the very beginning of this presentation, he's kind of disillusioned. He's he's a helpless uh, person who a helpless um, helpless you know uh, post-colonial uh, uh, modern uh, Sudanese who tries to you know uh, uh, call for help from somewhere by immersing himself in the river Nile. So his education seems to be some kind of an empty illusion without any uh, much effect on the uh, needs or without catering to the needs of the people. So um, uh, uh, that, that, that is something with regard to the uh, binary between Mustafa and the narrator. Now sex is one particular uh, dominant theme which you can find uh, throughout. Now this might be one of, because you know uh, the novel is basically not only about the, uh, uh, the uh, inability of the uh, characters of the story to bridge uh, tradition and modernity but it is also about uh, gender uh, and, uh, uh, and also the racial hierarchies which is reflected uh, uh, in, 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 in the society. So uh, you, you find uh, Mustafa Saeed uh, who, who kind of, uh, you know, his hypersexual relationships kind of reflect the way in which he exploits and manipulates certain Eurocentric ideas. Like he plays with the racial uh, stereotypical idea of Europe or of Europeans about the East. And, and, and he uses that particular idea so as to lure uh, women. He has simultaneous relationship with four women and he marries one European woman who he murders in the end. So uh, that is something which is uh, possible because he kind of manipulates uh, the very idea with which how uh, the colonizer sees the colonized. And uh, his uh, diary kind of reveals that um, uh, he murders his wife, Yon Mori, uh, uh, not because he did not love her. He was he, he really wanted her, but uh, she often refused him. And she knew that uh, she was kind of punishing him. And she she she, she was actually she can be considered as a representation of uh, that particular uh, 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 you know uh, European section of the society, which knows how to kind of punish. Uh, the East, uh, the, the, the East, which was in turn trying to punish uh, uh, the European ideas uh, regarding the East. So um, this particular uh, 
um, uh, phenomena uh, is, is something which is well explained in the character of Mustafa Said. Now comes Wad Rais. Wad Rais is basically a, a native of the village itself and he is the mouthpiece of obscenity. You find uh, several lewd remarks uh, um, which runs onto pages altogether in, in the book from Wad Rais. He's, he's in his 70s and he's always on the lookout for women. He had married and divorced many times and he was also proud of his amorous adventures and he used to talk about it as if he was the conqueror. And, and, and uh, he forcefully married marries Mustafa's widow uh, against her wishes and, and she refuses to consummate the marriage and then in the end he sexually assaults her and then she murders him So this and, and kills herself. So this is a tragic, so Wad Rais can be considered as a representative of the uh, native uh, 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 or the tragic end of a native uh, who has this, you know, uh, sexual passion uh, or also the representative of a patriarchal uh, tradition which kind of considers women to be just bodies alone and women to be available to him uh, uh, just because he pleases or he thinks that he can uh, please a woman, that he's handsome and that he's somebody who nobody can ever refuse. The only person who uh, critically, uh, uh, you know, who's critical of him, at least in a conversation, uh, is Bint Bajroop. Now she is one of the daughters of uh, uh, for a Sultan and uh, she, she, she too is in her 70s but she was well built and she was still beautiful. Uh, so she, she talks openly about uh, which of her eight husbands was uh, that uh, she liked to have uh, sex with or the sexiest of the eight husbands that she had had. Now uh, she sits with men and is critical of the licentiousness of Wad Rais. Uh, uh, she uses such statements which would which really hit a nail on his head. Uh, and her unlicensed tongue is also something which led to the divorce of one of her own daughters. So these are all characters which people uh, the novel uh, uh, which talks largely about sex and sexuality. So in, in, in to sum up, you know, in general, um, the season of my season of migration to the north depicts the uh, violent history of uh, colonialism which kind of uh, shapes the reality uh, of our Arab and African societies today. And, and uh, the novel, this particular violence is actually something which is not simply the colonial violence alone, but it is also something which has got its roots in the gender binaries and also the uh, racial hierarchies in the novel. And this is something which leads to uh, a violent death of two characters in, in, a, in, an, uh, in a village which had not heard about such suicide murder stories before. Uh, now maybe the novel kind of ends uh, with a note that uh, synthesis of traditional culture and modern ideas uh, cannot bear fruit as long as we live in the shadows of uh, patriarchal and colonial hegemonies. Uh, so this particular novella is actually uh, something which uh, can be considered uh, to a certain extent uh, uh, to be uh, 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 one of those Wad Hamid uh, cycle stories which, which uh, leaves uh, the uh, readers disillusioned about uh, the prospects of building bridges across. So thank you.